You know, growing up, I was quite the little gore hound, and you know, everybody I knew at some point in high school had to watch movies like Faces of Death, or I Spit on Your Grave, or Jungle Holocaust, or any of those types of films. And Millennium was known as a dark and disturbing and gory show. And yet there's still one episode out of the entire run that I have a very difficult time watching. It's an episode that, that about halfway through, I'm just so nauseous. I'm just so coiled up inside that I, I really don't know if I can make it through another watching of it. It's an episode that's so dark and disturbing because it's so real. And that's The Well-Worn Lock from Season 1. I want you to take this up to my room and lock the door and stay there. I need to brush my teeth. No, not tonight. Don't let anybody in. Not even Daddy. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's get going. What are you doing with her? Nothing. She's just going to bed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? What? Why are you wearing your clothes? You're wearing your clothes under your jammies? What are you up to? Nothing. What are you up Nothing. to? What the hell are you up to? Huh? Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? The Well Worn Lock is a difficult episode to talk about because it deals with child sexual abuse. And that's not something that uh, you know you really want to see in your weekly episodic television. I mean, yes, we talk about murderers and killers and and sometimes, uh, you know, they're rapists and whatever in the show. And, and they're always brought down, and, and you're somehow comforted by that. Because the fact that uh, a fictional character you didn't really know gets offed by a serial killer, it doesn't disturb you that much. But there's something about this episode that really tugs at you in a way that's kind of hard to explain. Especially if you're someone like me who has no emotions and I refuse to admit it. But the truth is, this is a very well done episode, and in the lore of Millennium, it's a great character piece because it focuses on Catherine instead of Frank. Cleared up or swept under the carpet? I'm not going to kid you, Catherine. Your job's in danger. For what? Your obsession with this case. For my obsession? You're rattling the wrong cages, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm the bad guy because I'm trying to do what's right? They think you're driving this forward against all good sense. Don't you see what's going on here, Bob? Just because it's hard to imagine or hard to accept, people don't want to deal with this because it's easier to believe that it couldn't really happen. I'm just telling you what they're saying. I didn't come here to tell you what to do. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a shower. <sighs> tell her I'm still on her side, will you? One thing that you hear time and time again about cases like this is how the family went along with it, how it was hard for the family to, to accept that it was happening or, or that they were uh, uh, unwilling to admit that there was a problem with it. Even though it was something they may have never considered before, once it started happening within their family, they just couldn't deal with it so they would block it out of their mind. And as Catherine digs deeper and deeper into the story, she finds a new kind of darkness within these people that she's talking to. There's really a strong correlation here, of course, within the Millennium Mythos. Millennium always dealt with dark things, with evil things, with the, the darkness inside of humanity. And here Catherine is taking a, a bold step, looking deep into the eyes of a, a, a different kind of darkness than what we usually see on the show. But as far as Millennium goes, it works very well. And there's a lot of interplay between Catherine and the other characters that lets you know that Catherine is not the type of person that puts up with half-truths and people holding out on her. And in a way, this really makes it that much stronger when we get to the end of Season 1 and we find out that Frank, well, when she finds out that Frank has been keeping a secret from her, and it's all the more heartbreaking to her. I'm sorry this is happening. Could have been avoided. How do you mean? I think you know. Are you at all aware how your daughters feel about their father, Mrs. Banks? Everything seemed quite all right for the past 35 years. Now you're an expert. Did you ever have a secret? 
Something you didn't want to tell because you were afraid someone might use it against you? No. We all have secrets, Mrs. Banks. Well, maybe that's what the best kept is. There's a scene at the end of the episode where the daughter is giving her courtroom testimony. And it starts out with these wide shots of her sitting up in the uh, booth and she's getting ready to talk and she breaks down. She can't do it. Catherine has to come up and help her get through this difficult time. And as she starts giving that testimony, the camera zooms in close. And you get a close-up of the father as he's at the table and, you know, he, he realizes what he's done and, and how it's destroying his family. But it gets uncomfortably close on her face. The camera forces you to get right in her face and to see the emotion and to feel what she's doing. It makes sense that this is a Catherine-centric episode because it's going to help bolster Catherine as a character in the series. We've seen Frank deal with uh, all sorts of crazy things throughout the series. I mean, even season two, season three, when he's dealing with demons, he's dealing with Satan, he deals with these, these just deep, dark, evil things. But yet there's something different about this evil. This isn't the serial killer of the week. There's a different type of evil here that's, that's so disturbing and so dark. And by making it a Catherine episode, you, as the viewer, are forced to really connect with Catherine on this level. Frank's still there. He still makes his appearances here and there. But it's really a Catherine episode, and it does it to make her a stronger character and to make it a better series. And it's all the more heartbreaking than when we see at the end of Season 1, and especially what we see at the end of Season 2. This is a great episode, but it's an episode that I really can't watch all that often.